Hey everyone, how's it going? This month's quick tip is a direct follow-on from last month's quick tip where we talked about material displacement. Now there's one feature that I did specifically leave out um, because I believe that it warranted its own video. Um, it's a micro displacement and it's another way of preparing um, objects to take on uh, extra geometry that isn't there for the purposes of rendering stuff like what we see on the screen. So just a quick recap, what we had last time was this very dense mesh, as you can see, it's got a lot of faces here. Um, and this not so dense mesh that you can see here and how the differences between having a very dense mesh and not so dense mesh uh, creates differences in displacement. Now, the material that we'd set up was just simply a diffuse shader um, and a brick texture run through this displacement node. And under my materials settings, I went down to uh, settings, surface, displacement, and I enabled displacement and bump so that we could see both bump and displacement settings. We can see that having a lot of topology does in fact give us the kind of geometrical displacement that is more favorable than a bump map. But for background objects, my money is always on using bump maps because it's very uh, light on the renders. You're not really rendering much. This is just one face. What I'm gonna show you now, let's just bring up this camera here and let's enable this group over here, is the feature known as micro displacement. Now to enable this, the first thing you have to do is go to your render window and enable under feature set, experimental, okay? What's the experimental feature set? Well, um, the Blender documentation basically classifies your experimental feature set as a feature set that is incomplete or that may be changed in future. And currently the only one that really needs the experimental feature set is micro displacement for uh, one of the settings within the subdivision surface modifier. Now this is the modifier that changes slightly when you enable that um, experimental feature set. So I have a number of objects here, two planes, a cylinder and a monkey head. Um, I, I want to show you the differences on different surfaces, um, how displacement actually works and what solutions you need to look out for when working with different geometry. So the first thing uh, that we do it, when we create an object. Okay, so notice that this is still just one plane. I've added a modifier in the modifier stack. It is not a material modifier. This is a object modifier. Um, but I've set my uh, subdivision algorithm to simple. Now, if you're working with uh, blocky or cubic or anything with a hard edge on it, uh, my money is always go with simple on your subdiv because um, it doesn't tend to uh, curve it. So if I say, for example, switch this to Catmull Clark, you'll see what happens. It sort of turns into this circle because it basically takes the edges and gives you the tangent of those edges rather than subdivide uh, those edges the way that you're expecting. And on cubes, it will basically make them more of a sphere or, and so on and so forth. So for those sorts of things, you should probably go with simple but that may not always be the best bet, which is why this one here has got a Catmull Clark algorithm on it. But what I've done with this particular object is something called edge crease. Now, quite simply, the way you do an edge crease, uh, let's just go ahead and remove the edge crease for this um, for now. Okay, so if we removed it, you can see that it's got that sort of weird circle shape we'll go into edit mode and we'll go control E to bring up our edge contextual menu. And under edge crease, we click on that. And as we drag uh, across the screen, we get more and more of an edge crease until we get to point one. Now, what I like to do is just type in 0.99 um, for my edge crease. And let's just, let's just let Blender catch up for that. And all it does is it sort of say, okay, you may be using a subdiv surface, but what we want you to do is uh, treat these edges as hard edges, right? 
Uh, that's what I've done here on this cylinder as well. So you'll see these pink lines. Um, the updating is shocking because, <laughs> okay, let's, let's just go into um, look development mode just so that we can work for a moment. But okay, so you see that I've actually done these edge creases. They show up pink here on the outer edges. Uh, but this cylinder also has a couple of other modifiers. It's got a solidify on it, uh, as well as a, an edge split. And then I've applied the subdivision surface. So I'll just go back into rendered view. Now you'll notice that this cylinder, all of the brickwork is projected from the top, okay? And that's because we haven't assigned how we should be projecting that particular procedural texture. The vector is uh, generated uh, based on uh, just default settings. And that is basically just uh, XZ, I believe, in Blender. Uh, that's sort of how it projects uh, according to the object. So planes are sort of special case because the XZ is across the planar uh, surface, but things that are, are more three-dimensional like this monkey head or this cylinder, well, they're problematic. And so how do we solve this? Well, what we do is we use an input node. Now, um, I'll go easy on you for now. Texture coordinates has everything we need. and We can do a generated input if we wanted to, and this could change it, but then we'd need a mapping node in between. Or my preference is to go with a UV unwrap because if we use the UV information, um, it gives us a more faithful representation of how we expect that texture to map to that particular object. Now, things like the Susan Monkey Head in 2.8 are already UV unwrapped for us. So you can see that the islands are all already split. Uh, and so that uh, this is what we're seeing on this particular monkey head. And this cylinder, I've gone ahead and UV unwrapped so that it is, you know, uh, occupying this cube space so that our X and uh, Z or UV coordinates, as it were, map on correctly for that particular object. Uh, now, if you are definitely going to use UV, instead of using the texture coordinate node, you can always just use a UV map node, which basically does the same thing. Uh, and you can select from a, a drop-down list of UV maps that you've used for particular objects on a material-by-material material basis. But what about the subdivision itself? Now, we've noticed that we've got uh, Simple and Catmull Clark, which exist in the uh, normal subdivision uh, feature set. But when we enable Experimental, we get a couple of other things. We get this adaptive um, option, as well as our viewport. And so the viewport is basically how a uh, faithful representation we get in our 3D viewport. And you can notice as I'm talking, uh, Blender really is chugging along to try to keep up with this and try to render um, on the fly what we want to see. And so I've lowered the, the viewport on, on this particular cylinder and you can see that it's not that accurate, but this viewport is just for the um, approximation in the 3D viewport. When it renders, it should render just fine. And similarly with this monkey head. Now, what is this adaptive render? Okay, all this does, and this is really clever, and this is why it's an experimental feature set, all this does is that uh, it's, it, it calculates what object is closer and therefore needs more detail rendered as opposed to an object that's further away and less, needs less detail rendered. And it adaptively subdivides those surfaces so that you can get a quicker render. So speaking of renders, I might as well go ahead and just do a quick render of these objects to show you what I'm talking about. So this is still using that setup that I'd had from the previous video. The total image looks more like this, and you can already see that everything here is displaced. That cylinder is looking great. I mean, look at those bricks, just sort of popping in and out of there. Um, you know, the bricks going in and out over here. And all the other objects as well, they also have that sort of uh, really awesome looking stuff. Now, before you ask about freestyle, yeah, <laughs> Uh, freestyle does not t seem to render uh, those displacements just like you would with a high-res mesh, 
uh, with a displacement uh, material on it. Um, and so, yeah, unfortunately, this is something that you need to find a different solution uh, for background objects. Thankfully, your shadow pass looks really, really good on displacement materials. And so that's where you sort of want to get your inking, as it were, for background objects. But keep in mind, background objects in comics, they're the types of things that you want to sort of have um, behind like a, a, a thick mist of atmospheric effects. And so those things should have inking lines that are barely perceptible in the first place. So uh, a freestyle pass wouldn't really cut it for things that are far away or the types of things that we're using these methods for. And so that's my quick tip for this month, all about the uh, micro displacement feature within Blender. It is a cycles only feature set. So this is not for Eevee. You need to enable your cycles render engine before you can enable your experimental feature set and add your subdivision modifier on your ob object uh, modifier stack. As always, this uh, blend file is available via a link in the notes below this video uh, free for you to download and take a look at, at the demo file, complete with this material, these objects, uh, and set up to use micro displacement within Blender 2.80 beta. Okay, thanks guys for watching. Bye for now.